Welcome back, everybody. In this last part, we're going to be taking a look into this, I think, very cool looking rocket launch. So just in case, let's see it one more time. The last time. This is how it looks like when rendered. And this is how it looks like in the project. I think it was pretty cool. Uh, so let's take a look how and how that was created. In most cases, it's very similar. Let's start with, so if you guys thought that it's one sim, you are wrong. It's actually three sims. And this is how I would recommend you doing it. In most cases, I would do it like this. I think Axiom can definitely support doing it all in one sim. But then again, why? What, what would be the point of that? I don't exactly know, because then with this way, you can get way more details, way more visual fidelity and more control if you do it separately like this. Like I said, you can do it in one sim, but doing it separately is usually better. The trick was using these two sims. I can show you, this is the original. This is the one that was rendered, which has, which is okay in terms of details. Uh, I was retiming it a bit in the beginning, so it had more push. So in the beginning, it's going twice as fast, essentially more push. So I was faking it a bit in terms of pushing it faster, because again, sometimes you cannot achieve everything in the solver. It's just better if you do it post, post sim, and it also makes more sense and it has more control. Then I was resampling it to something much lower and then caching it again. Why? Because I actually used these velocities to then influence the core of our smoke on the bucket. So you see, this is actually influencing that smoke and pushing it. So then this gives an illusion that everything is connected and it feels like one sim, which in fact is not. So let's just go through this one last time. And essentially it's very similar to all the stuff we've been looking at up to this point. We have our, just like a block of, you know, just a mesh, nothing fancy. And I, I set the initial velocities in one direction. I create a VDB from it. I noise it up, just multiply uh, some noise or add, in this case, I added noise uh, to the density, split it up to density, just to density and rename it to the temperature fuel. Uh, again, you see my bad naming conventions. I'm sorry, but in this case, this is influence pressure and influence. Like I said, for pressures, temperatures, velocities, you need your influence field. I merge everything together like this. From this density, I scatter points on it and I transfer the velocities. So you see, these are the velocities. What I do next is what I usually do. I create a pop net. I like using pop nets for velocities and pumps because it gives you a bit more an organic feeling to your velocities. In this case, I was literally just using a pop collision detect that I didn't end up actually using. Uh, everything that goes beyond this point just dies. So, you know, nothing special. And then a pop force, which would give me a bit more randomness in the velocity. That's it. Uh, I was, I guess, multiplying it down a bit, retiming it. So it actually starts from the beginning as being fully active. I tilted it down a bit, but you see, these are all small tweaks that I'm doing in order to achieve that effect. Uh, it's usually like that when you have to test, when you do a, a first version and you see that your smoke is lifting up too much and then you do a bit of detective work and you say, okay, it's going up too much. Maybe if I tilt the velocity down, it's going to push it down more. And that is exactly how my thought process goes. I do the VDB from it using the uh, influence velocity in this case. So I have influence as my field and influence velocity as my velocity. 
and that's it and i merge everything here together uh, in this case this is just serving as a collision so this is my base just serving as a collision and you can just merge everything together and this is another collision uh, for the ground so this is the ground collision station collision emitter plus my influence velocity plug everything in it's going to be a bit slower because oh no it's actually switched to the rtx that's it uh it's going to be this one is a bit slower because it's running at a higher resolution already and it's also a bit slower because we have a lot of volumes like this influence uh, it's taking a lot of it on the speed settings are nothing special to be honest uh, that's why i would like to have another disturbance is because i would add it to a much higher value in the beginning as you can see maybe from some of the examples especially from this angle here i would like this to be more disturbed immediately but just now because i i really liked the details i was getting here but not on the edge the edge would be more disturbed immediately uh like here you can see it's too smooth in this area but here it's fine so i would like something that is only affecting this area and that being controlled with the speed or uh, some sort of a different mask that's why i would like another disturbance and in this case i added sub steps to two because i needed a bit more precision if i go to one it's going to change the uh how the velocity and how the forces are interacting as you can see it's missing some of it here and it's not going to be nearly as explosive as if you put it to two or even three it's just going to be picking up more information because it's doing it on a sub step level so that's an important thing to keep in mind when you're doing stuff like this obviously it's going to slow it down uh, here i used the uh, 32 like i said because i needed the velocities to work a bit better if i use the octree lookup in this case well let's take a look you can see it becomes a lot slower and that is because we are actually creating a large volume and we, i'm pumping in a ton of velocities in this and it's also going to change the sim in this case because it is sampling more of the velocities which means it's going to change the data structure of the whole sim and that will change the simulation as well so you could use it if you want it will ju it's just going to take more time and in my case it wasn't absolutely necessary but you can see how the velocities are actually being sampled almost perfectly in this case uh, and you can see this sim is actually quite huge like capping it like i almost wanted it to be a uh, real scale real world scale and that is something i usually keep in mind when i'm creating simulations in general i like to keep it at i wouldn't say exactly at the right scale but just in the ballpark otherwise you get uh, your movements sometimes are not correct the way the simulation moves so that's for the left left side the right side exactly the same just on the other side and i changed maybe the some of the settings just slightly so i get different you can see i get different shapes and that is something if this was exactly similar to the right it wouldn't be as interesting but you can see i'm breaking the shapes a bit by creating by just changing some values like uh, using different pressure maybe add more temperature so it rises up more fast and stuff like that so that's something you can play around with if we take a look at the rocket going up it's Let me just disable this i can enable this one just so we have one side and you can see how it's it feels like it's connecting because it essentially is it's just overlapping and you don't see it in the renders or even here so how this guy was created it's a sphere 
scattering points, adding initial velocity, and doing a pop net. <laughs> That's it. And then I did two versions, disregard this one. One is for the density. This is our density. I'm also adding velocity, just normal velocity to our density. Uh, and the other one is for the influence velocity. And this one is larger and longer like that, just because I want the influence velocity to be working on my fields a bit longer. And so just so it completely captures the whole volume. And this is how the velocity looks like. You can see it go, it's going down, but it has some breakups in terms of shape. And then I'm using, like I said, these guys, the low re version, low res versions on the left and the right. I'm just renaming it to from well to influence well, from density to influence on both of them, merging them together, and then using them here in the first input as everything like that. And yeah, that's it. And then you merge it all together and that will, should work. This one was not the fastest to sim because it's so big and so large. And even though Axiom is quite fast, uh, it still took some time. And especially when it switches to the CPU, then it's a bit slower, even though I think I have a decent uh, CPU on this machine. But yeah, I think that's that's pretty much it, guys. There's nothing much more interesting in this case uh, to showcase. I can show you the full project again, uh, just a bunch of assets. And um, maybe as a bonus pro tip, let's see. This should be fast, right? Yeah, so here uh, I visualize my I visualize my low res volumes when I'm doing the camera work and when I'm blocking everything and doing the layout because it's faster. So you can see it's it's quite fast almost in real time and that way I can still uh, judge how the cameras are moving. So if you look at my first shot camera, I get I still get a really decent playback and I can see the preview on how the shot is going to look like. If you want, you can even turn on the depth of field to see how the depth of field is going to affect uh, your scene. It kind of works, not the best. It's just for in order to get in the ballpark on how it's going to work. And in some cases, you can uh, you can animate it. If you want, you can animate the depth of field. And here you can see how it would change it how the scene would be changing if you decided to animate the depth of field. So that's pretty cool to have. It's a good feature to have. Uh, the way I do my cameras is I do, I do a camera like that. I duplicate it. It's important to tick on key position when parenting, just so when you plug it back in, it's not going to change your main camera. You can see it gonna, it's going to stay. Uh, I go to the transform and in most cases I just clean the transforms and then I use this. So if I plug this in, this would be moving my camera. So I, I don't move anything. I don't translate on my main camera. I only use rotation on my main camera. Then I use translation on a different control from this camera. And then I duplicate it again. I put it in the middle and I use this as my noise to do the noise. You just go to motion effects, noise it up, and this would be your noise essentially. And let me, let me turn off that field and I'm even gonna turn off these guys just so you can see this in real time more. So that would be my, my noise. And obviously this is way too high, so I would change the period. So, so it's like that and like this. And again, I would layer, I would, in most cases, I would layer my noises. So you have one that's bigger and then one that's smaller and you can also animate it. 
and that's usually how I do my cameras, which I think it's quite simple, but super effective. Just go back so I don't override these ones. There you go. And that is it. That is it, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for this two overviews. For rendering, uh, the only thing maybe I forgot to mention, I just used the basic pyro volume, uh, just using the smoke, and that's it. And I changed the, the gradient, so I, I was actually getting some difference in densities. You can spot, spot it here. Like you can you can see there's some variation on the density where it's super dense, it's darker than when it's not as dense. So these areas are gonna be lighter and that will give me even more details uh, in the sim that uh, you would, it would be difficult. I mean, you can do it in the shader, but here they give you that option from the uh, straight out of the box. And that's how this project was created. And then obviously the lighting just to, separate it from the environment and add some backlights and stuff like that. Uh, and the compositing was quite simple. Anyway, that's it. That's it for that overview. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned something new and that you will give Axiom a try. Uh, we think it's a cool plugin and Matthew definitely deserves uh, the support for it because he's a genius uh, when it comes to creating tools like that uh, and just a great guy overall. Anyway, that's it from us on this Axiom series and uh, see you guys next time.